here to perform our national anthem. Please welcome award-winning, multi-platinum country music icon and star of the upcoming Fox series, Monarch, Trace Adkins. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the to Hogwarts, to Gotham. The nerds have come together to create a show for nerds by nerds. Join nerds doing nerd things as they talk about all things nerdy. Stay up to date on the show by liking the Nerds Doing Nerd Things Facebook page. Industries across the board utilize fleet trucks on a daily basis, from your local utility company to your grocery store, and many of these companies choose full-service fleet leasing. With a traditional lease, you're responsible for everything after you get the truck, but a full-service lease includes all the maintenance and other services at a set cost. Regardless of the scope or range of your fleet needs, TransService will engineer a fully customized, full-service fleet leasing solution optimized to your requirements, from asset acquisition requiring no capital investment, to the engineering, configuration, and selection of your fleet equipment, to the people, facilities, and equipment to keep your fleet maintained and repaired. TransService gives you everything you need, with advantageous fleet pricing based on our national account status, compliance expertise, inspections, licensing, permitting, personal property taxes, nationwide roadside service, we cover it all for you. Contact us today to learn why leading companies rely on TransService for complete turnkey leasing solutions. The following is an All Star 15 TV production. Hello, everybody, and welcome to All Star 15 TV. 
on the broadcast tonight. It is the Sim 500 Trans Service Truck Series live from the World Center of Racing, Daytona International Speedway. Up in the broadcast booth with me, my wonderful, really um, recently readjusted uh, broadcast partner, Mike Campingio. Mike, what's up, pal? AJ, glad to be back here in the Sim 500 Trans Service Truck Series here at Daytona. A little bit of a schedule change racing this race before the Easter break. So glad to see that. And I'm looking forward to 80 laps of fantastic three wide racing. Yeah, I'm really thinking that's what we're going to get tonight. We've seen a lot of it being practiced uh, in practice, being two wide, three wide, and just watching where the runs are going to come from. Uh, three sets of tires. Uh, we're looking at a fuel run about 30 to 35 laps. We're running 80 laps here tonight. That's regulation. We do have two green white checkers. But that's also 200 miles. Mike, take us through the tail of the tape for the couple races past. Well, AJ, let's do that. Let's start from this year. Earlier this year, the season opener for the Trans Service Truck Series was right here in Daytona. Tommy Ryan was on the pole, and he led one lap in that race, but ended up finishing 25th. The winner was Scott Simley, and Scott Simley started 37th, and he only led one lap, and that lap was the magic lap, the last lap. Most laps led was the boss man, Joey Gatina, at 13. The race had 13 leaders for with 39 lead changes in that race, six yellows, and both green-white checker attempts were used in that race. Let's go back to 2023, and the season opener there was 107 laps with only one green-white checker attempt to use. Tommy Ryan was on the pole once again. He led 13 laps and finished in 32nd. Winner was Glenn Campbell, who led five laps in that race and started in ninth. Most laps led was Justin Fuller with 29. That race also had 13 leaders, but had 49 lead changes, and that race had five cautions for 13 laps. Yeah, so a lot has happened. We, we're definitely going to see some some good chunk of lead changes between numerous drivers. Um, basically, what you're going to see is anybody in the field can win. It's can you put yourself in the position to win using the draft and staying out of the wrecks that are bound to happen at a super speedway with just a couple seconds left in practice. Mike, who are you taking tonight? Well, AJ, I'm going to take uh, Wesley Donaldson in that number 91 truck. Um, Wesley was he was in the top five in practice, but now he's down to 21st, quickest in that practice. But, you know, the draft will play a factor, and I think Wesley will have a good qualifying, and then he'll be strong in the race. What about you, AJ? Who are you taking? I'm taking the driver that are number two, Mike Kelly. When it, when we ever come to a plate track super speedway, whether it's Daytona, Talladega, I guess now if you want to include Atlanta, he's always up towards the front. Whether or not he finishes there is a different story, but he's always in the talk to be around the leaders. But qualifying just has started. Going to give it a little bit of time. It's a big racetrack. They have to get around. Um, but what are you expecting tonight, Mike? Well, I'm expecting a lot of two and three wide racing, a lot of bump drafting, uh, the pushes, especially toward the end of the race. Like we always see, he's going to get way up there and be super aggressive. And I also think we're going to be in, in play for a fantastic finish here. The SM500, uh, trans service truck series always puts on fantastic finishes. I mean, every single week, but especially on the super speedways, anything can and will happen like we've seen over the past year, AJ. Yeah, we're taking a look at Wesley Donaldson on his qualifying run. Coming to the green flag here. Kind of expecting him to use his first lap as a throwaway lap, but he's going to immediately cut it down to that yellow line. It's going to be interesting to see how these drivers are going to qualify here tonight because it really doesn't matter. You can go from last to first and maybe five laps, if that. Mm-hmm. But the further you are up front, the less chance of the chaos you're going to deal with. That is, for sure. And as we, you're watching Wesley Donaldson, uh, I'm watching Kevin Stone. And Kevin Stone's doing the complete opposite of what Wesley Donaldson's doing. He's running the whole first lap on the top side of the racetrack. And that's something that we've noticed in the last couple updates here when we've run the trucks at Daytona. 
is it seems like running that line all the way against the wall has really arrow affected that truck on the right side and it seems like a lot more people are doing both laps on the bottom now compared to what it used to be aj yeah and i've always been taught or told to run straight to that outside get the get the car or truck wound up but yeah you mentioned the last couple updates they, they always throw wrenches and everything and it's it's interesting to see how the drivers adapt to those wrenches being thrown at them as tyler dalton goes p1 for his first lap of 52 10. that was a very good lap by tyler dalton byron daly went p2 glenn campbell great to see glenn back this week in that 44 truck went p3 his first lap Definitely going to try to improve that. Brian Macklin, P5. And Chad Coleman, another solid uh, qualifying right now in P6. And Justin Fuller back in 15th right now, AJ. Whew. Yeah, I wouldn't be too worried. He won last week. He's trying to and make his commitment so he can make it to the playoffs. And uh, I wouldn't be too worried about the 51. A couple guys that have not qualified yet. Uh, Livingston Gallagher, EJ Work has not qualified yet. Mike Kelly has not qualified yet. Beasley Brown, Simley. Those are some of the bigger names that have not qualified oh, right, the yet. second lap goes eighth. Here's... Paul Jr. is on his first lap starting now. Jeff Ryan, let's see if he can improve. He does. P2. What a lap, Jeff Ryan. That was, that was impressive. Lap, Brian Wortman, P4. Great for Brian Wortman. That was, that's awesome. EJ Work. I was going to say EJ Work's back out on track two to start his qualifying. Three and four, ripping that inside lane. This will be his first lap coming to the white flag here. Good for 14th. 14th. See if he can improve here on the second lap. About 15 seconds remain in qualifying. What's going on, Joe Darnell? Thanks for tuning in tonight. That's basically it. It is. Tyler, He's gonna... Tyler Dalton is going to win the poll. We got about a minute of warm up. We're going to take a quick commercial break. When we return, we'll have the grid and the starting lineup for race number 11 of the Sim 500 Trans Service Truck Series. We're live from Daytona International Speedway. Industries across the board utilize fleet trucks on a daily basis, from your local utility company to your grocery store, and many of these companies choose full-service fleet leasing. With a traditional lease, you're responsible for everything after you get the truck, but a full-service lease includes all the maintenance and other services at a set cost. Regardless of the scope or range of your fleet needs, TransService will engineer a fully customized, full-service fleet leasing solution optimized to your requirements, from asset acquisition requiring no capital investment, to the engineering, configuration, and selection of your fleet equipment, to the people, facilities, and equipment to keep your fleet maintained and repaired. TransService gives you everything you need, with advantageous fleet pricing based on our national account status, compliance expertise, inspections, licensing, permitting, personal property taxes, nationwide roadside service, we cover it all for you. Contact us today to learn why leading companies rely on TransService for complete turnkey leasing solutions. And we are back. It's time to hit the grid for tonight's race. Starting on the pole, it's the driver of the number 19 Chevy Silverado, Tyler Dalton. Outside pole, you have Jeff Ryan. In row number two, you have Tommy Ryan and Byron Daly. 
row number three. Brian Wortman and Glenn Campbell, row four. Joe Hudson and Wesley Donaldson. And rounding out the top ten, it's Jimmy Coleman and Bobby Wetzel. Mike, take us to 20. All right, let's go. And P11 is Brian Macklin. Uh, qualifying number 12 is the the eight car or eight truck of Randy Yoakum. And 13th is Justin Fuller. And 14th is EJ O'Rourke. And 15th, Chad Coleman. And 16th is Kevin Brown. And 17th is Scott Stenzel. And 18th is Sean Macklin. And Nineteenth is, and we will let the rest of the grid go by here. Thirty-seven trucks starting this race tonight. Big field, a lot of very fast trucks. We're gonna get the uh, green this time. By, I'm excited. Eighty laps are on this two point five mile super speedway. It's gonna be fun. I can't wait. Mike, what are you predicting? Well, I think here at the start, AJ, I think we're going to see some different strategies. I anticipate to see a couple guys maybe in this top five or ten or so. If this racing gets real aggressive early, they will drop to the inside and drop to the back. But then you're also going to see guys that are going to risk it and stay up front and try to be up front. Mike, I think you might be having a internet issue right now. And miss at least I hope it's Mike and not me. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, because you keep cutting out. Oh, am I? Yeah. Ooh, that's not good. But I'm saying I hope it's not me though. But look at the top ten. It's all Chevys, and then from eleventh to fourteenth, the four are Toyotas, and then you got. 15th, 16th, and 17th with Fords. Fords not having a really good qualifying attempt here. No, and it's very interesting to see how this is all Chevys and Toyotas in front of those Fords, but we'll see if the Ford will have an arrow advantage in the race. Oh, Ace car is off, and we are about to go green. Green flag in the air. We are live from Daytona International Speedway. River Hunt says, no, it's Mike. <laughs> That's probably my internet a little bit. Got a storm? No. And there's EJ work. AJ going three wide top. We'll trying to get past Randy Yoakum in that eight truck. It's going to be a little bit tight off turn two. And look who's with them. Kevin Brown. They, you always see those two close together with, when we get to these racetracks. That you do, and they are making some headway up there a little bit. Now to the, they're, they're to the outside of just that Jimmy Coleman in that nine truck? Uh, no, that's Bobby Wetzel. Bobby Wetzel. Different looking paint this week. Yes. First lap in the books. It'll go to Jeff Ryan. So far, you know, EJ and Brown making very slow headway up there, but they are making moves. So as Dalton's three wide. And we are three by three by three for the lead here on lap number two. This is looking like the last two laps, AJ, not the first two. <laughs> this is already insane. Waiting to see if somebody in this top five here is going to pull out and just, just drop anchor and be like, all right, that's too too aggressive for me this early. But I would be doing 100%. But then oh, that's again, what I you, you, risk, you risk losing the draft at that point. You do. But the good thing is, too, these guys punch a big hole. Whoa. These trucks, Oh, these trucks punch a big enough hole in the air that it's you can still catch up. Jeff Ryan just blinked in front of the whole field, and there goes the 43 of Joe Hudson. Yep, Joe's like, okay, that's enough for me. I'm out. <laughs> but you're starting to see now, I think Brian Macklin and Justin Fuller and Sean Macklin here, they're leading that second pack. They're starting to tail off a little bit from this lead pack.
which, I mean, we saw this for the most part when we raced at Talladega a little bit ago, is for the most part in that race, we had one big gigantic pack at the front, and we still had the second pack that basically laid in the back all day until the last 10 laps or so. And look at that. They're leaving Kevin Brown out to dry on that third lane. And they are. EJ Works got a big push from Tommy Ryan here into turn three. Tyler Dalton's jumping on the back bumper of that 99 truck. Try to push him to the lead. Okay, EJ got out a little too far in that inside lane. Needed to wait for uh, Byron Daly to get to the back of him. Now we're going three wide here. Tyler Dalton jumped up in front of Kevin Brown. There you go. I think EJ... 41 to the lead. Hey, EJ Work got the lead there at the line. The second pack is all single file behind this front pack. Kevin Stone up here. Eric Arnold's up here in that middle line. They're trying to get that thing to go. Glenn Clamville's got nobody behind him in that bottom line. And there goes Brian. Brian, Brian Wortman going to the back. Good qualifying effort for Brian, but he's he's trying to be there at the end of this thing. Absolutely. E4. A great qualifying attempt. I know pit stalls don't matter. I know pit stalls don't matter too much at super speedways, but Brian's still gonna have a really good pit stall. Do you see a white Toyota? A right white behind Toyota. the forty-four. Uh, yes, I do. I do see a white Toyota. Okay. I do not see a number on that car, that right. truck. Ricky Ooding. Supposed to be in the number six. <laughs> I think we're getting really dicey up front. Jeff Ryan is pushing daily all over the place. That middle line, it's, that middle line's hanging tough with only three trucks in that middle line right now. Yeah, just a lap or two ago, that middle line was the place to be, too. Well, now EJ Work is dropping... Yeah, he's dropping anchor now. Well, Work is dropping anchor to the back. Oh, Jeff Ryan going to jump to the outside of Byron Daly here. He's going to get help from Kevin Brown off turn two. Ryan is pushing Byron on the bottom. Tyler Dalton's getting a big push up there. In that third line, we're three by three again for the lead. Sheesh, it's like they, somebody told them rain's in the area. Somebody should have told us that last week at Sebring. Although the crazy thing is, AJ, I don't know if you've seen a couple streams of iRacing here lately across various platforms, but there's been people running oval races in the rain in NASCAR. On iRacing. Uh-huh. Is that like a glitch? Because I know they weren't supposed to be able to. Well, I I don't want to give out their names. I don't know if you want that on the channel or not. But people can go out there and... It's two very popular streamers that do iRacing. Mm -hmm. You know who that is? You want me to name them? Yeah, don't, worry. don't give them the publicity. <laughs> exactly. But anybody wants to go curious, look up their couple of popular i racing YouTubers, and you'll see some interesting rain action in, in the Oval Series. Outside lane is starting to fall back just a tad here. That, that's Nick Silver in the 46 on the outside, getting a nice shove by Eric Arnold. And Kevin Stone's trying to keep up with them up there. Kevin's kind of indecisive on what line he wants to do go in right now as you say that back to the middle well, that was something I was noticing last night when I was racing here at Daytona I mean it was in a different car but it seemed like the bottom line was the bottom line and the top line was the two real like against the wall was the two most dominant lines in that race that I was in how often were you guys able to hold the three wide? Not as long as these guys, but <laughs> I mean, they. Not as long as these guys. But I know I was noticing last night, especially with the update here 
last couple last updates, any any car that iRacing's had, the draft and the error is really affecting any car or any truck now, and you really got to hold a steady wheel in these things. Eric Arnold is making that third. Oh, so who has Jeff Ryan that blinked in the middle? Jeff Ryan about blinked out for a second. That's got to be Kinda scary. Get... Yeah, it's a little sketchy. <laughs> Especially for everybody around you. And he's gone. And he's back. And he's gone. And he's back. That's probably one of the worst things you can have at a play track is going, having that happen in front of you. John Adams going to the lead right there. Uh, Byron Daly's coming back on the bottom, and that third lane of Nick Silver's moving up there too. Yeah, they got company now. The 42 stencil with them. Nice looking 42 truck. Bobby Wetzel's up there. Nope, oh, Bobby Wetzel's going to drop right to the middle. He's going to go with Kevin Brown in that middle line. Look at that line on the inside lane. Holy oh, cow. yeah. All those guys from Donaldson on back are content to run single file, maybe save a little bit of fuel in the draft. Mm -hmm. But the rest of these guys race two and three wide. Jeff Ryan getting a really big push from Kevin Brown. Those two are going to be clear for the lead here. I would assume that... Oh, no. I thought Jeff was going to jump wow. down, but it wasn't. It was Kevin Brown that jumped down. Wow, what a move. Kevin Brown Eric, to the point. He is to the point. Eric Arnold's now getting shuffled back to the back. Oh, EJ Work is going to come into pit road this time, AJ. Maybe a little bit of pitch strategy here. That's really off cycle. What? I guess 30 to 35 laps on fuel. You try to play it backwards, I guess. Well, maybe he's maybe he's planning for the end of this thing and trying to work it backwards from the end of the race. I would be anticipated to see if anybody else is going to go with him here on Pearl Road because it's one thing. It's the one thing you need on super speedways is you need somebody to pit with you. And let's see if he's going to pull off here. Oh no, he's not. He's going to stay on the track. I don't know what that was about. Maybe it was a little <laughs> fake. Uh, maybe it was a little fake out there. Did he come over the radio and say it? He he did come over the radio and oh, said it. A little bit of a fake out maybe. I think yeah. now, AJ, I think we're at the part of the run here. As, as I was just about to say, they were two by two, and they were going to log some laps, but Eric Arnold decided to say, you know what, I'm going to make it three wide again. Yeah. But I was, I was going to say, we're probably at that point of the run now is where these guys are going to just start log laps and get ready for possible green flag pit stops. In another 20 or so laps. Definitely sooner for the leaders. What a great run so far with all these drivers up front, side by side, even when they were three wide. Let's see, Walzenbox crack, crack the top 10 now in that 62. Look at your top three drivers. Plus 15 in Brown, plus 20 in Adams, and plus 22 in Silver. Impressive moves to the front of this field in 15 laps. Tells you how you get in the right line and you can get moving and you can gain a lot of positions. Yep. I feel like I said that before. <laughs> I think you have. I think you have. It looks like their lead pack is catching Brian Wortman. It looks like when Brian was trying to get to the back of the field, he lost the draft. And now Brian's on pit road. That 74 truck. Sixty-two of walls and back three wide, stuck in the middle there.
And his front pack is a little bit discombobulated here. And Tyler Dalton is starting to come back a little bit off this front pack. Tommy Ryan is going to the back. He's stuck up there in the outside line all by himself back there. I feel like Tyler Dalton's like a safe distance behind. <laughs> now something tells me that a lot of these guys are, that are running single file now compared to that were up there in the three wide battle, they're starting to save fuel. And they're getting themselves positioned when that pit window opens here in 15 to 20 laps. Jeff Ryan, three wide, stuck in the middle. That middle lane is really strong. Let's see if that 42 on the outside can get moving. Yeah, these guys are starting to, you're starting to see some of these trucks. They're starting to get a little bit sideways and going into these corners when they load off the banking. Is that low on fuel or tire wear? And at this point in the race, in this part of the run, it's probably mostly fuel related. Uh, it could be a little bit of tire related, but tires don't wear too awfully much here. Iron Daly, Kevin Brown putting the show up front right now. And Stetzel almost got the wall of one and two. He drifted way up high. Yeah, you gotta be careful hitting that outside because it's gonna immediately shoot you down, down the racetrack in front of everybody. Bro, Daly's loose. Whoa, big save right there for Byron Daly. It's gonna jam up that middle line. See if the top line can get any momentum now from that little jam up. Doesn't look like it hurt him too bad. Twenty in the books. Race has been fantastic so far. And has been. And that middle line, AJ, to me, tonight so far, we've seen the first 20 laps. I mean, it can only be three or four trucks, but that middle line can stay and stay battling for the lead. It seems like it seems like you don't need a whole line of car trucks behind you. If you have two or three strong people in that middle line, you can make it work. Is that because you're basically side drafting both lanes? You know, that, that, that doesn't that doesn't hurt either. That doesn't hurt either. That could be a good thing too. If you, I mean, because you can side trap both lines, and that can work to your advantage. Kevin Brown leads that lap again. I'm surprised that they're able to keep this sustainable. It shows you the talent level of this league, showing their display of greatness. <laughs> And there are all the lead lap cars in view right there. All the way from Kevin Brown to Doug Sigmund. I think that's the most car trucks I've seen single file in a super speedway race that we've done in two, <laughs> about a year and a half. And four and a half seconds separates all of them. Oh, well, the thing with these super speedway racing, you got to be so on focus, so on edge. I mean, one small mistake can take out 20 people. So it's like you're racing on a thin edge, wire, wire edge right now. I mean, I've said it multiple times. I'd be white knuckling it the whole time. Yes. And then once somebody would go, boop, I'd freak out. <laughs> 
Gadjo, this is great racing. Tim 500 always puts on great racing. Or at least entertaining racing. Put it that way. Your biggest mover of the race so far is Eric Arnold, plus 26. See the 31 right there. Oh, the 42's in the oh, wall! Oh, he's in the wall! Oh, keep it in. Oh, wow, what a great job by everybody. Heads up driving right there. Yikes. Well, that's what I we I was noticing a couple laps ago. Stencil was having a hard time holding that third line against the wall. But I don't. Did he get a little help from Eric Arnold right there, AJ? No, I don't think so. Now that's going to change the whole dynamic in this pack. You're going to see. <laughs> you got three trucks on the outside line. Everybody else is on the bottom. Kind of scared everybody a little bit, maybe, and be like a little bit of a heads up. Like, okay, maybe we should take it a little bit easier here. <laughs> yeah, we made it 24 laps. Time to calm down. Eric Arnold's really going to, he's, he's really hooked up in the draft here. He's going to pull right up to the back bumper of Jeff Ryan here in a mo moment because he got a really good suck in the draft. Yeah, he was back into like 12th or 13th, and he's already up till 8th right now. And what's weird is that's three tenths to the lead. I mean, you have to go all the way back to 13th to get to a second behind. Oh, there goes Jeff. Jeff was blinking out again. That three truck on my screen, at least, he was blinking out. <laughs> You can see Eric trying to give the three room just in case it keeps happening. Inside the lane looks to be pulling away just a tad here. Another guy that's come from the back of the field is that uh, 90 truck of Joseph Burgess. He, he came from 25th, and he's running the ninth this early on here. Good start for Joseph. Well, now we're starting to see the second pack back here go a little bit side by side. Brian Macklin is leading Justin Fuller and Sean Macklin here. I think these guys are trying to make a little bit of a run to the front here. Three drivers that like to work together. Uh, now they're going to get Stencil to jump up with them. Karlovich is pushing the EJ work behind them too. Let's see if these guys decide to stay in this outside line or they're going to try to force a three. Oh boy. <laughs> Oh, Macklin, fastest lap of the race of 47.36. Well, AJ's, we're creak creaking in here on lap number 30 coming up here shortly. Uh, that pit window is about to open here in a couple yeah, more laps. The floodgates are about to open. And on green flag pit stops, it's either fuel only or two right side tires or two left side tires. You don't take four under green. I've never taken any under green. Most of the time, I like to take no tires under green, but there, there's every once in a while, I do like a little bit of two tires. Because then on the next pit stop, if it's green, then I can take the other two sets of tires. Then I have like a brand new set, technically, but... <laughs> kind of. Kind of. Racer math. Two plus two equals five. That was fish. 
Go fish. Fairly odd parents reference there for people that don't understand. Oh, 62. Wells and back loose going into one there. Yeah, he's got Byron Daly pushing him now off here off turn number two. See if this outside line can get a little bit of momentum here. And Byron's pushing him side by side with Kevin Brown for the lead. I'm trying to figure out what John Adams is doing because he keeps getting out of lane and breaking draft. He might be trying to get a little bit of fresh air to that front end of that truck just to get a little bit of you know, warm to t cool down the temps if he's having temp issues. Brian Macklin's going to go high here. We're going to be three wide here with the lap truck. That's what I'd always be afraid of by getting out of line. Because now he's two laps down. Yeah. But hey, Actually, he gets two. Down. Hey, if he gets three yellows though, AJ, he's going to get the lucky dog every single time and he'll be back at the uh, yep. lead lap. And the crazy thing, if we think about it here, we are about 10 laps away from halfway in this race already. Yeah, we are moving. Well, Mike, um, I got to take care of something real fast. Uh, the, uh, the race is yours right now. All right, AJ, I will take over. As we have Wells and Box side by side for Lee with Kevin Brown here at the front. Byron Daly still giving him a big push. EJ Work jumping up in that third lane all by himself. Jeff Ryan is swerving in the middle there. I don't know what Jeff I don't know if Jeff was trying to get in front of EJ or what. Mike Kelly's coming to pit road this time, so the pit window is the pit window is open here. Mike Kelly's gonna come into pit road. Paul Jr. is coming into pit road. Simley's coming into pit road. Those three three trucks are in on pit road to start off green flag pit cycle here on lap number 32. Now the front of this pack is single fouled out. First side by side back there. Jeff Ryan, Eric Arnold, Glenn Campbell. Side by side. See how many guys come into pit road this time. And it looks like all right, it looks like the whole field is gonna stay out this time. So nobody's gonna pit here. And Jeff Ryan is still blinking in that outside line in that three truck. Okay, next round of pit stops here coming in this time. Wells and Box coming to pit road. Leader Kevin Brown's coming in. John Adams is coming in. Byron Daly's coming in. So we're going to get a whole bunch of people here to come into pit road this time by. Fieri's coming to pit road as well. Kevin Stone, this is going to be a good amount of this front pack. Good amount of this front pack is going to pit, and here they all come to the inside. Everybody easy on the brakes. Easy on the brakes, and they all made it that round to pit road. So now we'll see this lead group here, if they're all going to pit together here on this lap, or if they're going to go another lap. Ryan, O'Rourke, Coleman, Beasley, Eric Arnold, your top five. Brian Wortman, Brian Wortman shuffled three wide to the top. Here come the leaders. Ryan's going to be coming to pit road this time. Wetzel's coming to pit road this time. Donaldson's coming to pit road this time. So this should be the majority of this front pack that should be coming here. This group comes. About six or seven trucks stay out for another lap as this group comes to pit road with no issues. 
We go back up front. Now EJ Work is your leader. He jumps up in front of Justin Fuller. Fuller's going to go three wide mid with help from Byron. Byron. Yeah. Yeah. Brian Macklin and Sean Macklin. Karlovich is going to. Yeah, it was very iffy. Karlovich is shooting the middle too. It stops right around the. Right around the 32 lap mark they started. And something's up with the 41. He is well out of it. I want oh I want if he I want if he's out of gas or something. And here comes the rest of the leaders to pit road. That'd be my only thing for EJ. I don't know if he ran it out of gas. So this is gonna be interesting now with all these guys on different laps, different packs on the racetrack, who's gonna get up to speed quicker and and who's going to play this Chad out? Coleman. Yeah, Chad Coleman's got it. This uh, this pack behind them, though. They're hungry animals coming after them. Three wide behind the that lead pack. I don't know if EJ's going to get the draft or not. He's far behind the group that just pitted that... That 41 truck, I don't know if he's going to get the draft or not. Randy Yoko might be in trouble too. Oh, Wetzel going, throwing up a block. Great pick up go. by Fuller and Macklin. This is going to be interesting here. How they're all going to convene right together here. And Chad Coleman to the outside. And Chad's going to lead this lap. Full head of steam by the 38. And he's going to slide right down in front of Justin Fuller. And AJ, as they would say back in the day, and we are one big happy family again in this front back. <laughs> From first all the way to twenty second under a second. And Eric Arnold got shuffled out. Oh, he's gonna try to make that third line work here. He's trying to get to the outside of Jeff Ryan. Got yeah, Ooting right behind him. Trying to make it work. Wetzel got a big run on Tyler Dalton here off of two. He's going to give him a big push down the back. Fuller's pushing Chad Coleman on the bottom. Not for nothing. One. I'm surprised they were able to do this for 40 laps. Ooh, Byron Daly's going three wide top by himself. Trying to get it. Trying to shuffle Nelson Rivera to the back. Nelson's by himself in the middle. Well, our first round of green flag pit stops are through the books. And Chad Coleman, Fuller, and Macklin are your top three positions. Well, we have three wide a little bit further on back. Mike, as you mentioned earlier, that 22 is not in a good spot. No, but he's got more help now than he did just a moment ago. Because now Ricky... Go, I thought they were about to go four wide. Because now Eric Arnold and Ricky Udding have no help on the third line. Oh, now Byron Daly's going to jump up in front of Eric Arnold and see if he can get that door. And Glenn Campbell's going to jump up there, too. Got a couple more trucks up there in that third line. As we are on the halfway lap. There, AJ. Wow. <laughs> wow. Three trans service trucks, the 06, 44, and 54. All running that high line together. Oh, 
Well, Kevin Brown is getting a big push here with Jeff Ryan, and here we go. We are three by three by three all the way back in this front pack. Another lead change. Kevin Brown that time by. Oh, he's going to cut right in front of the 51. Yeah, he did. He cut right in front of him. Both Macklin scared me on that inside. They were well under the yellow line. And Jeff Ryan is getting a big push from Byron Daly. Hey, look at that. But these guys are getting more and more aggressive up here now as we're just past the halfway mark. I wonder if that's What's... why. <laughs> well, when you think about it too, AJ, if we think about this, they pitted on 32 to 35 in that range. Yep. You do one more pit stop, they get you to 60 to 62 to 65. There's a little bit after that. It's a one-stop race to get to the end of this thing if it stays green. Which we've, we've had a couple close ones, but so far... Everybody doing a great job on track to keep it two or three wide. Oh, Wetzel threw a little bit of a block there on Jeff Ryan to try to break that momentum on that outside line. Kevin Brown is going wherever that 51 wants to go, it looks like. Oh, to me, Kevin Brown looks like he's got a truck that he can go anywhere at any time where he wants to tonight. And, you know, he's always good at these plate tracks. Always. Go look at Atlanta last year. Granted, everybody wrecked in front of him, and he scooted along by, but... Wins but he's win. also, Yeah, he's also been good, though, at Daytona and Talladega, too, on the couple races we've done. As we, th we think about restricted plate racing here, it's always going to be the cream rises to the top at the end of these races. And we're starting to see that big, gigantic, single-file line form now. Oh, there it is. <laughs> starting with Macklin and going all the way back to the rest of the field. Great shot from the blimp cam. Oh, look at Bobby Wetzel now. He's looking to lead a lap here. He's got Nelson Rivera pushing him, and Nelson's been really strong in restricted play races. He won last year at Talladega. There you go, Bobby Wetzel, P1. A little bit of a gap now in that inside line behind Chad Coleman. Byron's, Byron Daly in that old six keeps trying that third line, but, it, I mean, nobody's going with him. He keeps just peeking out. This has been nuts. <laughs> It's been very entertaining to see what all this the strategy these guys are doing, the three wide, the two wide. You know, I mean what what can't what 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 don't you like about this racing right here? You know do what I mean? Have, do you have the tail of the tape up? I do have the tail of the tape up. How many what is the most lead changes and the most leaders we've had in a race before? Uh we're gonna well AJ, we're gonna have to go all the way back to two thousand twenty one. They had fifty four in that race. <laughs> 54 lead changes. What about most leaders? Uh, let's take a look. Most leaders, that would be... 
Well, it's actually a tie. It's a tie between the 2023 season opener and the 2024 season opener. Both had 13 leaders. Gotta be getting close to that. Well, when you think about it, they only they only do uh, lead changes at the start finish line. They don't do it counting all the rest of the racetrack. So just imagine if they did that. How many more lead changes you would have? Hey, you ain't kidding. Heck, we could probably put out Bristol numbers what the Cup Series did a couple <laughs> weeks ago. <laughs> I don't care what anybody says. I, I love that race. It was a good race. It was a there was a throwback with a tire wear. I mean, maybe it was a little bit too aggressive, but hey, heck, you know, that's what people want. They want to see tire wear. They want to see you know those guys slipping and sliding around. You know, that's great stuff. They just maybe maybe just need to watch the wear it a little bit. But I mean, other than that, you add a little bit more horsepower, AJ, to those cars, and oh, you got a recipe for success. <laughs> but that's a story for another day what I'm pretty sure that the the uh, gentleman on the uh, off and turn one podcast talked about yes you hear that right on this channel every Friday you can Justin Fuller is going to the back he's had enough of this front pack oh here we go AJ four wide oh Jesus yeah, they now it's that real fast yeah, Bobby Wetzel got up. Did you uh, link the podcast to do a read here? Or do we want to save it for a yellow? <laughs> I mean, you can go for it right now. <laughs> all right let's do it real quick here let's see if they see if i can time this right all right we want to thank everybody uh the page sponsors here all links are in the description of this broadcast let's thank the nerds doing nerd things podcast new episodes every thursday on facebook youtube and twitch the wrestling with nerds a wrestling podcast that covers wwe aew and the independents from vintage world wrestling federation to the wrestling that is out today new episodes every friday and there will be have plenty to talk about going into next week with WrestleMania. <laughs> uh, let's also thank out Falcon Graphics. Save five dollars in your first order when you mention All Star Fifteen TV and tell them that we sent you there. And let's also thank Drinking Bros Auto Race, Auto Racing, a Facebook group page all about all things racing. They will have plenty to talk about based off the Thermal $1 million challenge in IndyCar this past weekend. You had the Formula One race in Australia. A lot of people were happy about Max Verstappen going out in the first three <laughs> laps of that race. Uh, and then you also had the Cup race at Coda. And then you also had the Xfinity race that had a fantastic finish with SVG, uh, Austin Hill, and Kyle Larson. And then you also had the Truck Series race at Coda where they had a whole rear end axle come out of Marco Andretti's truck. So I'm assuming. I've never seen that before. I don't think anybody's ever seen that happen. So make sure you uh, follow that Facebook page for all things racing. Uh, coming up this week, too, they got the NASCAR weekend at Easter at Richmond. They got the Xfinity Series on Saturday and the Cup Series on Sunday. IndyCar and F1 are on the break for this weekend, and IMSA's on the break, too. But now, back to the main, main yeah. show here. As here comes Nelson Rivera looking for P1. Definitely trying. Kevin Brown's giving him a nice shove out of the turns. And the crazy thing, too, about this race so far, AJ, is I think right now, if you would say, who do you think is going to win this race? I could tell you about maybe about 30 of these guys can win this race because a lot of these guys have not been, you know, up here being aggressive in this front pack. So we don't know technically know how strong of a truck they got. Mm -hmm. So right now, I'd say we're wide open for a winner. Only one car, one lap down. That's a 74 of Brian Wortman. And we are about 10 laps away from that final pit window opening here. We're on lap 52. That final pit window should open around 62 to 65. If I do my math right. From time to time. 
It looks like they're going to be catching. I think that's the 96 truck of Gerald Levinson up here ahead of these guys. So it looks like Gerald's going to go a lap down. Looks like he's going to try to keep it to the high side. Oh, AJ and I was, as I almost forgot to mention, we got to thank our series sponsor here, Trans Service Trucking and Logistics, for sponsoring the Trans Service Truck Series for the Sim 500. We want to thank them, too, for doing that. As they're on a, a good chunk of vehicles tonight, as they are every week. Look at that. Th uh, that they are. P4, 6, Byron Daly, Glenn Campbell. If you thought it's been crazy all night, wait till we get to about 10 laps to go. <laughs> oh, it's really going to ramp they up They are going to be done playing nice. Kevin Brown jumping to the outside now, going for the lead. He's got Byron Daly pushing him. Kevin's going to slide down in front of Nelson Rivera, a new leader here at the start-finish line. Kevin Brown might be a contender for leading the most laps. Uh, I think he'd be very much in that category right now. They're about to catch Brian Wortman again, I believe, that 74 truck. Yep. That would be him halfway down the back straightaway. And Jeff Ryan just set the fastest lap of the session at a 47.132. So Jeff's showing some pretty good speed back there. I can't believe they've been too wide all race. It's been awesome. Here they go getting around Workman. And they should get by him with no issues. No, if he can, he could tuck in right behind the 10 of Richard Beasley. I think he's trying to do that, and no, he's going to stay, he's going to stay top, and he's going to let Donaldson and Beasley go. I thought he was going to try to get in behind Yoakum there for a second. Well, oh, Beasley dropping all the way to the bottom. Oh, Jeff Ryan bl blinked out again. And we're now starting, I'm now starting to see a lot of these guys try to get to the bottom. As, yeah, Gerald Livingston just cut across Ricky Udding's front end. I, I thought Gerald was going for a ride right there in the middle of the trial. That's a that's a place you don't want to go for a ride. No. The, the, the triable's tricky enough. Yeah, you go through riding the triable, I mean, you might get black flag for spinning down pit road. <laughs> I would know, because I got accidentally penalized for that in the 500. Oh. Thanks to iRacing. Jeff Ryan got a big run here. I thought he was going to jump out to that third line, but he's going to stay behind. Tucked in. I want to see, too, if um, Fuller and Macklin and Donaldson and those guys, if they make another run to that outside line as pit window opens like they did on the first round of pit stops. Well, we are just a couple laps away. Because when, when they did that, that first round of pit stops, they got right to the lead, and they got out in good shape ahead of the pack. Brandon Daly holding his own in that second lane. Oh, here oh. we go. Pit Road. 42, Pit. Scott Stenzel. Fuller. Fuller. Macklin. 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 Karlovich.
And I'll see who's gonna be the next taker here. The pit. They are good to make it to the end. See if somebody breaks off here. They're all going to stay out here. Nope, here we go. That's Nick Silver coming to Perrault. Simley's coming. Kelly's coming. The teammates coming to Perrault. Ooh, Kelly locking them up. This is the money stop. You need to hit it perfect getting to pit road. You get a speeding penalty here or some sort of penalty, and he, uh, that might be the end of your race if you don't get a yellow. Mm, this group's going to stay out another lap. Nobody from this front pack's going to pit here. 20 to go. I just honestly just realized there was 20 to go. Thanks, AJ. <laughs> I thought we had another thought we had another 10 laps out more to that. I've just been so invested in this race. Yeah, it's been it fantastic. Been phenomenal. I just wish I was feeling better to enjoy it as much. Oh, AJ, we'll get you rested up on the off week next week for the Sim 500. and hope everybody enjoys their Easter vacation and Easter break. And then we'll be back at it in two weeks at Pocono on the April 10th, the two-mile uh, triangle. Yeah, good thing we're, we're doing these uh, not on location, because I don't think you'd want to be next to me with 102 fever and a sore throat. <laughs> no, I, 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 don't, I don't think so there, AJ. <laughs> Plus, you got a big week next week, so we got to get you 100%. You ain't kidding. You ain't kidding, pal. Got about a 220 mile drive south uh, to Philadelphia for WrestleMania next week. And Kevin Brown continues to lead over Nelson Rivera, Byron Daly, Tyler Dalton, Glenn Campbell, and Chad Coleman here. I got to jump on board with what you said earlier. That 93, wherever that truck wants to go, he puts and gets it to the front. Yeah, he, he right now I would say that he is the leading contender for the strongest truck in this race. star car in the youtube chat clean racing uh clean race gentlemen keep it up it's awesome to watch and absolutely it is and byron daly's getting a big push here on this outside line from glenn campbell they're side by side now couldn't push byron clear out there well now richard beasley's blinking in that 10 truck That's something we haven't seen all night is Richard Beasley blinking out. He's another one, plus 14. 29th to 15th. We are closing in on 15 laps to go. I'm very curious to see how far these guys are going to stretch it here as we're getting down to the last 15 laps on fuel. I think they're within the next two or three. But we know one thing, AJ, once these guys get done with their pit stops and everybody cycles back together, you're going to have about 10 laps to go and it's all heck's going to break loose. Oh, yeah. I'm excited. <laughs> That outside lane is going to have to find a way down to the inside, though. <laughs> no such thing as pitting from the middle lane, safely. Uh, no. There's not. 
Because you don't, you don't communicate from that top line that you're going to pit and then somebody's going to stay out and then there's just going to be carnage. People running all over people and not fun. Got any takers this time by? Uh, like Gerald Livingston. And Doug Sigmund. And Paul Jr. Oh, Byron Daly. Was that Daly that shifted to the bottom? It was. He, he just cut right to the bottom there. Beasley going to the bottom. I think we're going to have a lot of guys coming to the pit road this time here. Campbell's getting a big push from Wetzel here on the south side line. No, Nelson, Nelson Rivera is coming in, AJ. This is going to be a big group here. See if we can pull it out to the blimp cam to see everything. <clears throat> oh, oh, there it is. There's the 31. He's around sideways. Keep it off the wall. Whoa, great job. Nice save, Eric Arnold. He kept it off the inside wall. And that's exactly what we said, AJ. If you, Ooh, he got into the back of Kevin Stone too. Ugh. He did a heck of a job keeping that off the inside wall. He did, but I'm curious about any nose damage or any rear end damage from the, on the 17. Well, that's like we talked about: is if you don't communicate when you're gonna pit, and that's exactly what's gonna happen. And here comes the leaders right here. Literally everybody else. Oh, this is going to be good. This pack is going to get together and we're going to have about 11 laps to go. Whoever can get on and off pit road and stay together and get a good run, it's going to pay dividends to them. Look who's leading this, first, uh, this second pack. Justin Fuller, Brian Macklin, and Sean Macklin. And Karlovich. He was with them on that first round. As this pack's going to come off pit road and see if anybody's going to be able to get up to speed and stay with this front pack. I think these guys are going to blow by the guys that just pitted. Stencil's going up to throw a block to get behind. Have Kevin Brown push him. Yeah, they cleared those guys. It just came off pit road. It's not even close. Brown is going to shoot the middle. He's going to shoot the middle. Here he comes. Stencil trying to get there. Ryan's going to try to shoot the middle, but Ryan's going to go to the bottom. EJ Works coming to pit road. Uh, Macklin going moves. to the... Yeah, Macklin's trying to get a push from Sean Macklin. M the Macklin bros working together. Is that S Simley's stuck out there, third lane by himself. There comes Kevin Brown. He just shot out of a cannon to get up to third in that outside line. Here's the thing. Do you take just enough fuel to make it, or do you pack it? Uh, I would have tried to pack it just in case he had a green-white checkered. Wetzel trying to make this third lane work now. Oh, contact there between the Macklin brothers. I would assume We're... Brian's probably not happy about that. I don't know. We've got 10 laps to go. Almost here. Stay tuned after the race. Mike will bring you the interviews with your podium finishers. This is absolutely insane. Oh, there's no lane back now. There, It's all push, 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 and if there's a hole open, you're going to fill your truck in it. Sean, bumping Brian out of the way, has dropped him back to 17th. And now 
knows Glenn Campbell and Byron Daly, they're going to try to make this third lane work up there by themselves. They got no... Trucks. Yeah. Oh, Wetzel. Is that Wetzel that just slid in there? I think it was in that nine truck. It was. Bobby slid his way right in there between them. Fuller jumping to the outside, getting a push from Kevin Brown. Karlovich all over the Karlovich is all over the back bumper of Macklin on the bottom. Chad Coleman going to the third lane. Beasley's going to the third lane. Business is picking up. Nine laps to go. There goes Stetzel. Stetzel jumped up there. Oh, we're going to be three by three off turn two, AJ. I have a good feeling here. Remember the last time Stetzel was on the outside leading? He did clip the wall in two. And here we go. We are going to be three by three for the lead. If Stencil can just get a little bit more push here from Chad Coleman, we're going to be three by three for the lead. Coming to eight laps to go. This is nuts. Business is picked up. Checker flag is in sight. And these they boys are... Opening. Yep, these boys are racing hard now. Oh, Stencil, there it is, Fuller, and here we go, here we go. Here's the big one. Chad Coleman, and there's the big one. That's the entire front pack. Well, we made it 73 laps. Well, Chad Coleman went for a ride in that 38 truck. And my pick is in it. Donaldson's in it. I think Mike Kelly's in it too, AJ. What did I say about the 42 hitting the wall out of two? You did. You called it, and that's exactly what happened. And there's just no place to go. Everybody was three by three, packed tightly together, and hole closed up. New ball game. Is that, is that Ricky? Is that Ricky that made it through that? Did he make it through that in that blank car? We'll the blank find truck? out, but we gotta jump out with Chad Coleman here. Oh man! Oh, and he got oh he got yeeted up into the fence. I mean, Chad was lucky that thing did not get caught in the fence. I said, well, see, Ricky made a little bit of damage there on Simley, but I was like, I saw him, like, sneak his way, mostly. Oh, wow. Built Look at Simley. that. He, I mean, he got Simley, but, I mean, he, he got his way through there. Simley wasn't making it out of there because of Uding. <sighs> well, well, AJ, that was the big one. Yes, yes it was, and that's our first caution of the evening. Let's take a quick commercial break. Industries across the board utilize fleet trucks on a daily basis, from your local utility company to your grocery store, and many of these companies choose full-service fleet leasing. With a traditional lease, you're responsible for everything after you get the truck, but a full-service lease includes all the maintenance and other services at a set cost. Regardless of the scope or range of your fleet needs, TransService will engineer a fully customized, full-service fleet leasing solution optimized to your requirements. From asset acquisition requiring no capital investment, to the engineering, configuration, and selection of your fleet equipment, to the people, facilities, and equipment to keep your fleet maintained and repaired. TransService gives you everything you need, with advantageous fleet pricing based on our national account status, compliance expertise, inspections, licensing, permitting, personal property taxes, nationwide roadside service, we cover it all for you. Contact us today to learn why leading companies rely on TransService for complete turnkey leasing solutions.
From Mortar to Hogwarts to Gotham, the nerds have come together to create a show for nerds by nerds. Join nerds doing nerd things as they talk about all things nerdy. Stay up to date on the show by liking the Nerds Doing Nerd Things Facebook page. Well, we are back after that commercial break, and we are setting ourselves up for a four-lap shootout here in Daytona. Thanks for everybody for spending your Wednesday night with us here on All Star 15 TV. I'm Mike Campeggio, alongside AJ Coppola, who's a little bit under the weather tonight. A little bit. <laughs> but we appreciate AJ for everything that he does broadcasting these races and giving the platform for these guys to show out for the fans at home. It's Daytona. I wasn't missing it. This 102 fever in the sore throat. I was not missing it. Well, we got in the chat. What is that? MB car, star car, clean race, gentlemen. Keep it up. It's awesome to watch. Is that? Did you read that off earlier? Yeah, I did. I was gonna say it just popped up on the multi-stream tab now. But hey, it's okay. That man's that man's got it down. But well, we're about to have a four-lap shootout. Are we done seeing Rex? Ooh, I don't know. I mean, we could see a green white checkered, or we could not. I think, I think it's fifty fifty. I'm gonna go fifty fifty. AJ. <laughs> I do know one thing. I think we're gonna only, and we're gonna. This race is gonna have the fewest amount of yellows in the past four or five. That's good. That's good. So a very pace car race too. It has been. The pace car is about to peel off. We're going to get the green flag here with four laps to go. And green flag is back in the air. Brian, Ma or, yeah, Sean Macklin gets a really good start right there. EJ Work went to the apron there. Another three wide back there. I guess Jeff Ryan blinked out, and that's why he did that. Oh, and here we go. Their contact. Oh, uh, Brian Macklin hard into the wall, and it's the big one, number two. Well, it looks like we're going to have uh, Green White Checker doing it. Yep. Well, let's see what happened here. They're three wide. Oh, was that neck code a little bit, AJ? Joseph Burgess. Let's take a look at this. I don't know if the eight got into him or Tommy came up into him. Oh, no, Tommy did got him. They both, I mean... I think it was a little bit of both there. One was coming up and one was coming down. What a big wreck. That is a big wreck. And Hamish Gallagher is in it and Brian Macklin was in it. From the back end of Ejo O'Rourke. Ooh, he just... The hole closed up behind him. He was lucky. Well, we're going to get our first green-white checkered attempt here coming up. 
in a couple laps. Yeah, the gloves are definitely off. Everybody's good on fuel. Everybody made their bed with tires. Justin Fuller is running a modified. That's the that's the car meme right there. Don't take me out, coach. I could still race. <laughs> Well, AJ, we've seen a lot tonight. It's gotten really hectic here in the last few laps with two yellows. But what do you think for the finish here in the screen white checkered attempt? I, I, I really don't know. Our car count has completely diminished um, with both those wrecks. So I, I really don't know. I kind of want to get this to finish under green, but when it comes to Daytona, who really knows? Hmm. Well, look at the damage on the 93. That Ford is he's, really pushed in. Yeah, he's got a little front-end damage there. We'll see if it's going to affect him if he leads a line. Because I think if he's pushing somebody, he'll be fine. But if he pulls out, tries to lead a line, that may be a little bit of a hindrance. And he's been one of the drivers up front all night. But how about this, though? You got Nick Silver in second. You got Jeff Ryan in third or fourth, I should say. Shannon Wood in fifth. Randy Yoakum in sixth. Jason Casper up there in seventh. I mean, we got some guys up there that putting on great performances right now, tonight. At plus 28 for Casper. That's, that's amazing. 35 to 7. And he's open to gain seven more spots, and he he will win this thing. Well, should be coming to the one to go this time by. Since this is only our second caution, let's uh let's pay some bills with Trans Service again. Industries across the board utilize fleet trucks on a daily basis, from your local utility company to your grocery store, and many of these companies choose full service fleet leasing. With a traditional lease, you're responsible for everything after you get the truck, but a full service lease includes all the maintenance and other services at a set cost. Regardless of the scope or range of your fleet needs, TransService will engineer a fully customized, full service fleet leasing solution optimized to your requirements. From asset acquisition requiring no capital investment, to the engineering, configuration, and selection of your fleet equipment, to the people, facilities, and equipment to keep your fleet maintained and repaired, TransService gives you everything you need with advantageous fleet pricing based on our national account status, compliance expertise, inspections, licensing, permitting, personal property taxes, nationwide roadside service. We cover it all for you. Contact us today to learn why leading companies rely on TransService for complete turnkey leasing solutions. <laughs> From Mortar to Hogwarts to Gotham, the nerds have come together to create a show for nerds by nerds. Join nerds doing nerd things as they talk about all things nerdy. Stay up to date on the show by liking the Nerds Doing Nerd Things Facebook page. are back for our first attempt at overtime green white checkered pace car is off sean macklin nick silver your front row here for this restart green flag is out here we go two laps to go i think they make it we are gonna find out aj uh. kevin Kevin Brown's really pushing Sean Macklin as they go on to turn number one. 
Yeah, EJ Ward going to shoot it three wide to the middle. Jeff Ryan going to go oh, shoot it go. all. There we go. I'm wrecking again. And we will have our second and final attempt at overtime. Aaron Daly after a very good race. He's in it. Nelson Rivera, he had a strong performance tonight. Tommy Ryan and Glenn Campbell got a piece of that. Oh, yeah, just the, between the, the 06 and the 31. Oh, Welsenbach got a piece of that. Is that Simley that was down there? Or is that Kelly that was in that Exalter car? That truck that got a piece of that? Yeah, and it looks like it is Simley. Oh, big hit. Big hit. He did a pretty good job of saving it on the grass. Yeah, I was talking about the ones going head first into the outside wall. Yeah, those uh, Tommy Ryan hit a ton up there. That's one of the worst angles. They, that's one of the worst angles you can hit. Right? Oh. Nothing Tommy Ryan could have done. Oh, and then Nelson hits him again. And Glenn Campbell. All three trans service trucks uh, were involved in that. A little rough. To, well, that's rough to, for the sponsor to see that. Well, AJ, we are going to get our second attempt, final attempt at a green white checkered. And we know for sure that the race will be over this time by this this attempt even if it's the yellow or the white my kind of sign they take the white do they race back no matter what uh they should be yes they should be racing back no matter what with the white and anything and anything goes when that happens this is going to be pure chaos everybody who you rooting for, chat? Hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't yet, follow if you're on Facebook. But who y'all rooting for? Or are you just hoping that we finish green? Because unfortunately, my uh, my pick is seen better days. Well, Wesley, for me, is sitting... Uh, let's see where... He's sitting 20th, so... Anything can happen. Yeah, you just need to be on the lead lap. That's it. Being on the lead lap, attached to the front group, you have a shot to win this thing. I don't really think we had a lot of takers down pit road for service. Everything is just to fix damage and who knows if they can make it out. No, we ran, what, the first 71 laps green? Yep. 73. 73 laps green? I wonder how these guys, some of these guys are going to be close on fuel because you got Kevin Brown and Nick Silver here running the apron. Kevin Stone's running the apron. I wonder if these guys are close on fuel, AJ. If they didn't get it fully topped off for multiple green white checkers. How much does that help? It, it does help because the, where these fuel cells are, you're going to need all the fuel to swish over from the right side of the truck over to the left side to get it in the pickup. So it does help running the bottom, running the apron here. And the pace lights are out. We're going to get double wide and we're going to come to the green flag this time.
<laughs> That's funny. Got some funny commentary going on with some of these drivers under the yellow laps here. Anything you could relate to that? Uh, just just a couple of guys saying that they love each other. <laughs> get the get the loving stuff out now before I can look at. <laughs> yeah, right. But Mike, appreciate Bo you being a. Uh being here tonight basically taking over from my voice not being existent yes well that was, like I said you were under the weather tonight and I was out last week resting up my body after getting an adjustment at the chiropractors that sound like pop that's how I felt but in in, in in other words, here we come to the green flag, AJ. Two <laughs> laps to go. Our final attempt. This will be the final green flag of the night right here. All or nothing. Pace car is off. And here we go. Green flag is in the air. Two laps to go. Let's try it again. It's not that time, everybody. Nick. Yeah, well, Nick Silver got a little bit of better start this time. And they're jumping up to that third line. EJ Works jumping up there to that third line. Yeah, what else is new with EJ? Jeff Ryan. Oh, Jeff Ryan jumping up there. Randy Yoakum going to fill the bottom. He's pushing Sean Macklin. EJ Works coming to the third line. And, oh, Jeff Ryan comes up into him. And the caution is out. And that is the race. Pretty sure that's Looks Sean Macklin going to be your winner here tonight. Sean Macklin. Looks like Sean Macklin, Randy Yoakum, and Shannon Wood is going to be our top three tonight, AJ. Wow. Now they technically have to run this lap and the next one, right? Yeah, they still have to come around and take the checkered flag. I'm looking at the replay here. Yeah, Jeff just came up to throw a block, and EJ, EJ was there. We got a little, let's see if we can go. Oh, the 43 into the tire barrier is extremely hard. Man, that's heartbreaking stuff right there. Sorry. Sorry no. What was he doing? Well, let's take a look at it, AJ. <laughs> He's he coming in. Caution's out. He doesn't even get out of it until he's, like, right there. Oh! Oh, my goodness. That's... That's, uh... Oh! 100% preventable. Uh, yeah, especially knowing how long the caution was out. But, there it is. Checker flag. Sean Macklin, your winner in Daytona. Randy Yoakum, P2. Shannon Wood, P3. And we will get to them in a moment for interviews. Industries across the board utilize fleet trucks on a daily basis, from your local utility company to your grocery store. And many of these companies choose full service fleet leasing. With a traditional lease, you're responsible for everything after you get the truck. But a full service lease includes all the maintenance and other services at a set cost. Regardless of the scope or range of your fleet needs, TransService will engineer a fully customized, full-service fleet leasing solution optimized to your requirements. From asset acquisition requiring no capital investment, to the engineering, configuration, and selection of your fleet equipment, to the people, facilities, and equipment to keep your fleet maintained and repaired. 
Trans Service gives you everything you need with advantageous fleet pricing based on our national account status, compliance expertise, inspections, licensing, permitting, personal property taxes, nationwide roadside service. We cover it all for you. Contact us today to learn why leading companies rely on Trans Service for complete turnkey leasing solutions. And we are back here in Daytona. Sean Macklin's burning it down on the front straightaway, celebrating that win. And let's see if he's ready to talk to us there, AJ. Sean, it's AJ and Mike in the booth. You got us? I got you. Man, what a race. Congrats on the win. You led 14 laps in this race. Uh, We ran the first 73 laps green, and then we had a lot of yellows at the end. Just talk about your race overall and talk about how you got the win. Yeah, man. I mean, it was a good race. Uh, we just, me, you know, the entire Aftermath team, we just rode in the back um, most of the race to try to avoid incidents and, you know, what was coming. And we decided to pit off sequence and ended up working out and in our favor and it put us in a in a good position uh, at, the, at the very end with all the cautions. Just unfortunately, I was the only one left after after the, the first caution. So, um, but yeah, other than that, it went pretty good. Yeah, he got the win at the end of the thing, so that's that's going to be a big confidence boost uh, as we now go into an off week next week for Easter and then focus two weeks from now at Pocono. Give me your thoughts as we're going to go to the tricky triangle. Uh, another track I have some learning to do. Um, just, uh, you know, fresh into the Trans Service Truck Series, I just haven't run a lot of these tracks, um, you know, like some of these other guys have, so I just got to learn them, and uh, we'll definitely be doing some practice and uh, beforehand and trying to figure that out to give myself a little bit of an edge compared to what I'm used to. So, Well, before we let you get out of here to celebrate your win tonight, is anybody you'd like to thank? Yeah, man, everybody at Trans Service Truck Series, all the guys that put it on, uh, all the admins here tonight. You know, Justin stepped in tonight to to get things going. And obviously all you guys at the broadcast putting on the race and uh, for everybody to see. So it's a good time. Well, Sean, uh, great show tonight. Great win. Congrats on the win. Uh, Enjoy your... uh, off week next week and we will catch you in Pocono in a couple weeks all right yep see you then and that is Sean Macklin your winner Let's should we talk to P2 here he is P- Randy Yoakum Randy Yoakum it's AJ and Mike in the booth you got us I do AJ uh it is actually Mike interviewing you but okay, AJ Mike. is here it is AJ is here too he's a little under the weather um man P2 you started in 12th. Talk about your race and talk about the craziness that we saw in the last 10 laps of this race. Well, you know how it is at a plate track. Uh, it's, it, it, it's a matter of survival. And I was just very fortunate to be in a position to get a good finish at the end. And, you know, as far as what happens on those last few laps, it's, it's simply guys going for, uh, going for a spot to try to get a good finish. And it, uh, as you know, it's it's very hard to pass uh, at a plate track, so uh, uh, that lends itself to those kind of events and things that happen like that. Yeah, you're one hundred percent correct. It's a it's very hard to pass on restricted plate race tracks. Um, as we shift now our focus from Daytona to a couple weeks from now at Pocono, uh, give me your thoughts on how that eight truck may do at Pocono. Well, we're going to do what we can uh, to be as good as we can there, for sure. Uh, It is a highly technical track. Uh, Track position is everything. So uh, we're going to try to put this thing up front uh, to begin with uh, and get some more uh, recognition for VA 811 uh, and 811 in general. It's an an awesome um, uh, thing 811 is. A lot of people don't understand what it's all about, but it is an awesome thing. But we're going to try to qualify up front and then just, you know, stay clean and bring it home for a good finish. I know you're uh, plugging your sponsor there, the 811, uh, right there. I was just going to ask you, too, uh, anybody else you'd like to thank sponsor wise or? Uh, hey, look, it's uh, as far as thanks is concerned, some of the help I've been getting. Uh, and and also uh, the teammates teammates are great and uh uh hanging with the boys and and obviously the the family uh environment that we have here at sim 500 is an absolute plus 
uh, we fuss and we fight every now and then, just like, <laughs> you know, uh, drivers do in real life, because even though it is a sim race car, uh, it is a real sim race car. And some of the very things happen in sim racing as they do in, uh, in real life. So we fuss and fight, but you know, at the end of the day, this is about a family environment and, uh, you know, friends and the fraternity that we have here. And uh, I got to be honest with you, Mike, I appreciate that the most. Appreciate what you guys do, too. Well, Randy, that was perfectly well said on the fraternity of sim racers. I think that's the best I've ever heard somebody say that. So that's that's awesome. Uh, enjoy your off week, and we will catch you in Pocono in two weeks, all right? Absolutely. Thank you. And that is Randy Yoakum in P2. Let's drag in Shannon Wood. There he is. All right, Sh Shannon, it is Mike and AJ in the booth. You got us. Yes, sir. How y'all doing? Well, man, you got a P3 finish. Congratulations on that. You started in 20th. Uh, give me the rundown on your race tonight and all the chaos that was out there in Daytona. <laughs> well, we just kind of, I, I, I figured on the start, I just kind of started the uh, back of the pack. Just kind of stayed back there. I figured there was going to be a lot of wrecks. So it was pretty cool, you know, kind of up to the end of the race, but uh, I just kind of stayed to the back and waited for the big one to happen, then we tried to get up front after that. And we did see the big one erupt a couple times there in the last 10 laps of that race after we went 73 laps caution-free. Uh, as we shift now our focus from Daytona to a couple weeks from now at Pocono, give me your thoughts as we're going to go to the Tricky Triangle. Yes, yeah, Tricky Triangle, definitely. Um, it, it's a pretty good track. Uh Got got some shift points in there in some of the turns. Um, I'm not I'm not a real big fan of that track, but I'll be there and we'll see what happens. I think you brought up a good point too. The shifting will play a factor in these trucks at Pocono as well. Well, before we let you get out of here to celebrate that P3 finish on the podium, is there anybody you'd like to thank? Uh, yeah, just want to thank all the Sim 500 guys, especially the Sim 500 Mafia for the help, and uh, appreciate you guys broadcasting this thing, man. It's always awesome to go back and watch. Well, Shannon, enjoy your off weekend. Enjoy the holiday weekend, too. Um, and we will catch you in a couple weeks at Pocono, okay? Sounds good. Y'all have a good one. And that is Shannon Wood, your P3 finish. AJ, before I wrap things up, any final thoughts on tonight? So we had a great side-by-side, two-wide, three-wide race for 73 laps. And then if TJ were here, he would have enjoyed all the chaos from 73 to 83. I think he would have too. Yes, he would. But uh, good, enjoy enjoy the off week. Great race tonight. These guys put on a great show. Great to see Sean winning the race. Uh, Randy getting a second place finish. Shannon Wood getting a third place finish. Great runs for all three of those guys. We're going to have this off week to enjoy. AJ, you got your trip to Philadelphia. Hope everything goes well there and you have a great time and feel better. And we will catch everybody in two weeks at Pocono and the Tricky Triangle. See you later, everybody.